All right, we are live. Hi, everyone. I'm Grandmaster Magesh Panchanathan. Hi, I'm Coach Henry. Good to see you guys again in Challenge Your Chess Coach. I know some of them were really disappointed. Arman um, was one of those players who really wanted to challenge us, chess boy. And he, when he heard that we didn't have Challenge Your Chess Coach last week and he was not so happy. <laughs> All right, well, here's his chance. Yes. So today we have um, Coach Luis was not able to um, is not able to play today. So we have Coach Ben, who will be taking challenges. That's Hazy thirteen, and of course I will be taking challenges, and Coach Henry will also be taking challenges. You should be able to see all of our um, Chess.com IDs around, and we're going to play a bunch of games. Yeah, Chess Boy says he was very sad when he heard about it. <laughs> I'm well, we're very happy. I don't know if we should take this as a compliment. Maybe he was he's thinking he should just come and beat us up. <laughs> or is he just missing playing us? I don't know which way we should take it, Arman. But we are going to take it as a compliment. <laughs> because that's what we choose to. Awesome. Right, I see Ben is playing. Oh, Ben already started. Awesome. Let's go on to it. I was just looking at uh, one of the national masters, one of our former students, Tejas Rama, playing a game. He was online just looking at some of his um, game, but let's go on to Hazy13. Who is he playing? Let's... Chess Pen 2011. Chess Pen 2011. Okay, that's nice. All right, so Chess Pen has also chosen to put their knight on c6 in front of the c pawn. Here, I think. You know, if, if white is going to put their pawns like this, it makes more sense to not put your knight there so you can always have c5 against the center. Because here, I mean, your only other pawn break is e5, and I don't know how realistic that is here. Absolutely. I think e5 is not so common. And this was a theme last week, right, out of the last session. We had lots of students do this. Uh, by the way, someone's asking on the chat, how do we do this? Uh, so if you've not done this before, you can look at my chess.com ID, which is Tami. It's pronounced as Tamiran. It's written as Tamizan. And then we have Coach Henry's Chess.com ID, which is Nuki Chess. And then we have Hazy13, which is Coach Ben's um, Chess.com ID. Uh, the way it works is you send a challenge and one of us will accept it. But right now, me and Coach Henry are just looking at Coach Ben's game. So we'll just look at some games. At some point, I do a simul. At some point, Coach Henry will start playing some games. Uh, but just take your turn. You don't need to be a friend to be able to challenge someone. Just remember that. You can just find our ID on chess.com by searching up in members, and then you should be able to challenge us. Lots of kids want to comment it. Arman wants to comment it. Ryan wants to comment it. I know. Well, at some point, we're going to get that going. As it is, we've had some technical difficulties for us to start going. <laughs> so, ooh, did we're we get Bishop takes in the chat? We appreciate that. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. I think any any variations. It looks like um, Coach Henry took on eight seven, yeah. So not Coach Henry, Coach Coach Ben. I think we just missed that H7 was hanging because they played Rook B8 there. Oh, yeah. So after E4, Knight takes E4, Knight takes E4, Bishop takes E4, H7 was simply under attack. And yes. uh, I don't know how, how many times a day I say, look at checks and captures, and especially hanging something that's capturing keys with check. We have to be more tactically aware than this. But. That's a combination of all the things that we need to know. <laughs> All right. I see a chess.com ID that says wish but not Anand. <laughs> <laughs> Very clear on what they want to convey. Mm -hmm. Dinesh says almost a Greek gift. I don't think it's a Greek gift with a queen on C2. That's just called a free pawn. But yep. we could see definitely some similar ideas here if the queen manages to come around to the H file or if he gets his knight to G5. <laughs> So um, I guess Ohm is saying he only has a limited time. Limited time. Okay, Ohm, you can um, maybe go for it. But I, we have no way of directly communicating with Coach um, Ben. He's just kind of playing based on the challenges that he receives. So uh, first couple of games, it's just him challenging. But when, when, when I start playing, I'll be able to play multiple games with you guys. So let, let him play a couple of games. Let's see some of these games casually, and then you guys can challenge me, okay? Ayush, you also need to go. Hopefully, you'll still get your game in before you leave. Remember this. This is not only you challenging. This is a fun activity for all of us to watch and mm -hmm. analyze the games together, right? Everyone gets a chance. 
All right, so here Ben has some very serious check meeting ideas on the H file with the rook lift to e3. Oh, I think that's it. Rook h3 followed by queen h7. It's that's the end of it. Rook lift and checkmate. All right, that was a quick end. It was a good game. I guess it all started off after losing that pawn on h7, yeah? And actually, the funny thing is, look at where the rook ends up on, on b7. <laughs> What's that? The, the black rook ends up on b7 in a funny way. Yes, P and Kenny wing, your rook, you know, it's creative. I don't know if I've seen it before. <laughs> okay, so you started the next game against Sai Charan. Okay, so. Guys, yeah, you can feel free to challenge me, but I'm not going to take any challenges right now. Maybe yeah, like guys, we um we have told you, we will let you know when you can challenge me or Coach Henry. We won't be able to play and keep talking here, so you'll have to wait a little bit. I know some of you are in a rush, rush but um, you know we can only have so so many games at a time. So bear with us. So what do we have here? We have um, Dalapin. The Sicilian Alapin and looks like okay, knight to c3 or bishop to c4. Okay, fair enough. I've been playing a bunch of crazy house, Coach Henry. I don't know if you have played enough crazy house. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. I, I, I've been playing three different forms of chess this week in camp crazy mm -hmm. house, atomic chess, and three checks. I love three checks. Three checks is my favorite. Now, oh. in any of those variations, you would have played bishop f7 a long time ago, I think. I know, exactly. <laughs> in fact, that's the reason I, I thought of it. I was like, <laughs> In crazy house or in a three checks, bishop f7 is just winning, I guess. <laughs> it's like in it's like already a blunder. Coming to f7. Yeah, so that's that's basically game over. Yeah. yeah, I find that atomic definitely. If I play a lot of atomic, it, it really ruins my real chess game because I'll like <laughs> sacrifice like three pawns just to get my rook near his king. That does not work so much in, in regular chess. Meyer says atomic sucks. Well, actually, all these variants are fun. I I really don't have any problem. In fact. I used to have only problems with um, take me, which is what kind of ruins your chest. But even that, I feel like it has its own benefits in the sense it has, um, you know, it, it basically has some form of uh, calculation, right? You have to think a lot. Yeah, actually, the line be very deep in forcing. Actually, one d4 loses in in take me. I think after one d4, black can win by force. Almost everything loses, I think. Oh really? <laughs> okay, I've not seen the other ones. There's one winning by force move. I think it's one e3, and they've worked it out with computers. Wow, I don't know that much theory, Henry. <laughs> you <laughs> seem to clearly know so a lot more theory. Yeah, I don't know. Do you know, like on Lee Chess, for example, you can see the evaluation graph of a game? Oh, I I have I've seen that a little bit. I've seen that in chess.com too. Yes. Oh yeah. Well, when I play uh, take me or anti chess, every time the evaluation graph. We'll go like made in 30, negative made in 30, made in 30. Oh, wow. Okay. Made in 30. That's, that's funny. <laughs> like just from the most innocuous looking moves that I think. So I'm, I'm definitely not good. I think I'm like 1400 on uh, anti chess and B chess. <laughs> <laughs> but I know Anatoly Karpov. Just realized uh, I didn't turn the lights on here. It's a lot better, I guess. <laughs> All right. So white has, I guess. An isolated queen spawn, so. Yep, yeah, we have an IQP. And I actually... I was going to say I prefer black's position, particularly because of this pin, yeah? This is a really annoying pin from bishop g4, knight f3. And I guess whenever I make a reference, Coach Henry, if you're um, not sure in what move I am in, or if we'll make sure we're on sync to catch up on that. So the reason why I feel like black's usually good in this IQP situation is because... Um, I mean, in this particular situation, so I think this pin could be a little annoying. Uh, I might have preferred queen f6 instead of queen d7. Yes, that looks good. But it might be hard just to hold on to the d pawn, right? With this d6 and d7. Unless, unless d5. Well, right now d5 is probably running into knight e5. Okay. So there is definitely going to be pressure. I agree with that. Dinesh is asking if you're going to watch Chessable Masters. What is that? Um, it's in the same series as like the Magnus Carlsen Invitational, if you watch that. Oh, okay. I've not not been watching that much. And also, I guess Arman wants to know your Lee Chess 
<laughs> account. By the way, guys, we, we have a Chess Kings and Queens Academy um, club in Lee Chess. We're going to add... I know there was a camp um, page as well, but um, we're going to add... add um, we already have a, have a page. We're going to add more players into that. We probably only have about 30, 35 members in that group right now. But I will definitely post and we'll add it. Coach Magesh, is it Coach Ben or Coach Hazy? So uh, Hazy13 is Coach Ben. And uh, Nuki Chess is Coach Henry. And Tamizan would be me. Yes, good, good detective work. My Lee Chess is also <laughs> chess. Good job figuring that one out. <laughs> can he take the pawn on e, uh, d4, Henry? Looks like he can, right? Just a6 and it takes. And oh, try no, to stick. No need a6. <laughs> try to stick to the pawn with e5. Stick knight takes d4. Knight takes d4. Mm -hmm. And then bishop takes d4. Eventually, when the rook goes for d1 for a pin, which looks very dangerous, I could play e5. But actually, I think that might be pretty dangerous because white has bishop h6 followed by queen f6. Let's see how this goes. Rook d1 is what uh, Arman's asking. That's right. We just saw that variation, but let's see what um, Coach Ben is going to do. He is known to walk into time trouble. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't go want to go for any risky variations. He moved knight b4. Interesting. And he's also hitting the knight on b5. I think he's keeping it very simple. What was wrong with... Just a6 kicking the knight, and then it seems like I can take on d4 more easily. Fair enough. Would have been simpler, yeah. <laughs> well, a6, was it possible to play d5? No. Actually, yeah, a6 would have been much simpler. What what um, Coach Henry is pointing out is to play a6 here. Remove the defender, classic remove the defender, and then take on d4. Um, there's still possible pin, but black will have an extra attacker easily. But okay, he's played knight to c3. Mm -hmm. Well, at least it doesn't feel like, you know, white's about to lose the d5. They did manage to get the bishop here. I guess black can put a knight on d5 and cancel d5 forever. Exactly. Well, right now, he still doesn't have enough. I guess he can start with a6, e6. Okay, now I'm afraid that black might be in trouble. He played rook c8. I might have preferred the move a3. Because the knight doesn't have a chance to go to d5 yet. After rook c8, I'm talking about move 17, Henry. Okay. So oh, if, because the knight immediately can't go to d5. Yeah, so then I, I, if I force you to go back to c6, I can even consider playing d5, yeah? Mm -hmm. And also, I know even I can just play rook d1 after that too, because I know at that point, uh, knight will not go to d5. So uh, Sai played rook d1 directly, which is still fine. I'm still comfortable with white's position. Maybe your move a6 was a critical idea, and, and I think now it might be a little bit tricky. Mm -hmm. And he's also low on time. Let's see if Sai can get this get this win. I know these kids are super excited when they walk in saying, I want to play the coach. I want to beat the coach. <laughs> so now e6 seems like a really natural move to me. Like it's still wanting to can I play d5 if you play e6? Okay, he has simply played a5, which... I would have played, actually, after a5, d5 was also pretty strong. Looks like Sai didn't play d5. I think the, the moral of the story here is that you always want to play d5 when you have this isolated pawn. It's the, yeah, the when you have the two bishops too, right? You add two bishops, you have the isolated pawn, you get to play d5. I think um, I think Coach Ben is in a little bit of trouble here. He's, he's almost like half the time and he does not have a great position. So let's see. Let's see how this one goes. Om was asking, what if a4? I'm sorry, Om, I probably didn't see this on time. I don't know what position you were talking about. So we will keep going with our analysis. So I guess white, um, Sai is taking his time. The good news is the knight on a6 has nowhere, no good squares to go to. Mm -hmm. Unless he gets finds a way back to play e6, knight c7, knight d5. Knight e4. I like this. The knight's heading to c5. Yes, this is this is not looking comfortable actually. <laughs> Can black play queen b5? Try to put some pressure back. Okay, he's played knight c4, which is also 
some pressure back. Wait, did he blunder something? Can I play knight c5 still? Mm. No, eventually the queen b5 move would be a savior, I think. What do you think, Henry? What do you think Sai would respond with? Sai, say that again? I, I was asking what do you think White's move would be? He played knight to c4. Good question. I mean, how? You can play bishop c1. Maybe you do have to go for knight c5, huh? Well, actually, there's a variation of knight c5. Knight mm -hmm. takes c5, pawn takes c5, hitting the queen. Queen b5. Bishop takes c4, queen takes c4, queen takes b7. So for those who are not following, what we are talking about is knight c5. And what knight c5 does is, of course, blocks the support of the rook. Also hits the queen. So, oh, that's what he played. After knight takes, pawn takes, the rook will be hitting the queen. But there is a variation of queen b5. By the way, every time you guys play moves that we talk about, we are always worried. Do not listen to the stream when you're playing a game. <laughs> Well, I know you can find some of the good moves on your own. Mm -hmm. So we're not worried about that all the time. But in general, just make sure you're not listening to the stream when you're playing your game. Mahir is saying Nakamura is the best. Thanks. Mm -hmm. That is true. He is really good. However, I, I don't know if you saw this, um, Coach Henry. I was seeing a video in which Tani, this kid from uh, New York, okay. he was playing against, um, he was playing a puzzle battle against Nakamura. Yeah. <laughs> and he beat him. Mm -hmm. I was like, wow, this like young kids. And I think they it's basically them doing so many puzzles. Yeah. And I know I know a kid who's who used to do this puzzle rush and he knew the like the tough ones by heart. Mm -hmm. He would just look at the position, and he would know the answer. Mm -hmm. and I was like, that's amazing. Yeah. Well yeah. when you get above a certain tactics rating, there's really only like 500 puzzles that are above, you know, 2700 rating or something. So you, you can absolutely just memorize them. <laughs> but Why if you it? look at uh, chess.com hosted a puzzle battle world championship, and the, the story of the tournament was just like 2800 grandmasters getting completely destroyed by like 2000 rated puzzle experts. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. I didn't, I, I know there was a puzzle rush like tournament. I did not really. Um, yeah, I don't know that any of the grandmasters made it past like the second round of elimination. <laughs> wow, that's that's pretty impressive. By the way, I don't know what's going on with Sai. He's down to sixteen seconds. He was he had like double the time from Coach Ben. I think he kind of froze on some of these ideas, and now he's probably worse. So what happened here? So he could have taken on B seven here, right? Instead of taking on B seven, he played Rook B one. Which probably is a mistake. I mean, he should still be able to hold if he has some time, but I don't think... Well, actually, now it's a little tricky because if B2 falls and A3 also falls, so it's... Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can't really get too excited when you're up on time against Ben. Because he is such a slow player, I, I think that he spent about half of his life in time trouble. So he knows how to play quickly when he has to. Yeah, we have a lot of players who are totally like that. Like who have a very interesting personality of always giving this impression that they're going to lose on time. <laughs> and then that also somehow messes your, your play. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this looks pretty lost now. I guess rook d1 check is also walking into a pin. Mm -hmm. This rook is pinning that guy, so that's going to be basically game over, I'm guessing. Ah, he wins a queen or, or a rook. He takes a queen. So he's winning both the pieces. He might, he might, he might win the rook and the bishop. <laughs> so he's going to. No, yep. it's not. He might. He is. Okay, that was unfortunate. What a good game! I, I definitely feel like he was outplaying him in the first part of that middle game. Yeah, good game, Sai. The only thing you need to realize is, um, just when you were probably at a good point and you could have pushed for a win, I think you took too much time. I know it's blitz, so you'll have to figure out figure it out. All right, let's see who's the next person. Sai is like, no, I was winning. Yes, you were. You were better. <laughs> I don't know if you were winning. I would not say that. But you were definitely way better. With the time maybe added to it, you might be close to winning. Glowing Gactor 3. I forget who that is. Coach Ben is playing Glowing Gactor 3. Let's see. 
Mm. Doesn't even know who that is. By the way, I do get a lot of challenges from uh, you guys during the day. Mm. Just remember that, oh, Glowing Actor 3 is Mahir. Okay, so Mahir got a game in, nice. Okay, so this is a pretty solid opening, but I don't know if I should take on c6 and play d5. Maybe just knight c3 might have been better. I would have probably just left. After bishop d7, just knight c3 is more solid, or take a knight c3. In fact, what I'm talking about, everyone, is just go knight c3. Because then you're threatening to win the knight and win the pawn on e5. Probably a little bit better. Yeah, I, I think there's a pattern here where we kind of develop our pieces without giving ourselves a clear pawn break. Like, I think, again, like, if you are going to take on d5, I at least want to have the pawn on c4 in front of the knight, right? Because I don't see a clear... Actually, that's a very good point. Let's see if anyone who was in the stream yesterday who did the game analysis with me can point this out in the chat. Look at what Mahir did. He played knight to c3. And we talked about this yesterday. So you brought up a very good point, Coach Henry. We were talking about the exact same thing about leaving the pawn on c2 sometimes, right? So the difference between King's Indian and the Purkar modern defense where the pawn remains on c2 and is it actually good to play d5? I don't know if anyone um, would remember that. Mm -hmm. So let's see if... Um, I don't think I'm seeing anyone who's giving me that answer. So <laughs> I don't know how much they remember. But the point, everyone, is that when you have a pawn on d5, you really have to expand on the queen side. And leaving the pawn on c2 and playing knight c3 is not my best, um, not not the best of the ideas. Yeah, I've heard it said that you want to play on the side of the board in which the pawns are pointing. Like, just imagine the, the pawns drawing an arrow. Absolutely. You look at a pawn chain and you point towards it. But it looks like he just won a piece, yeah? So, it oh. looks like Mahir <laughs> blundered a bishop. Yeah. Oh, and he played g3. Ouch. We lost another piece. This game is unfortunately getting... <laughs> And why is um, Ben thinking so much? <laughs> I, he, I guess, oh, he did see it. Okay, <laughs> okay finally, he did take it. Okay, we have Ryan who just joined in. Awesome, Ryan. Ryan, by the way, uh, both Ryan and um, Armand today were saying that they, they will not be playing their match against New York. And then they jumped in in the last minute and started playing. <laughs> and almost saved the match. You guys had... Um, a bunch of wins. Okay, so Ayush says he has to go. And I guess this game is a little, uh, I mean, at this point, not that interesting because we win both the pieces. I'm mm -hmm. going to take maybe a few games, Henry. All right. And I'm going to talk about it. But I guess, um, I guess we're allowed to talk about it a little bit. <laughs> All right, go on, guys. Um, Ayush is going to challenge me. Maybe I'll take Ayush's game alone. Aish, you want to challenge a three-minute game? So it'll be easier. So by the time we finish, we can come back to um, Coach Benz. I'm not doing a simul. I'm only taking Ayush's challenge because he wants to leave. All right, so I got white pieces. Not bad. And uh, let's go with regular stuff. My favorite is Rui Lopez. Uh, were you able to see my follow my game, Henry? Yep, yep, I can see it. Awesome. I spent most of my childhood playing um, D4, you know, the Scotch Gambit. <laughs> I don't know if you yeah. have played enough of that. What's that? I don't know if you, you have played a lot of Scotch Gambit or not, but... I've played it with Black a lot. Okay. Um, I'm, is, am I falling for an opening trap? I just need to remember this. Bishop B3, Knight takes D4, Knight takes Pawn takes, Queen takes C5, and Queen D5, and Bishop E6... Queen c6 check. Bishop d7. It might become a draw right there. What did I miss? <laughs> How did I play d4 and get into a mess? Okay. I'm going to give up a pawn and just play on. Let's see. <laughs> Let's have some fun. For those who are uh, looking at what I was thinking about, there is like a c5 and c4 opening trap that I need to watch out for. Which I probably forgot. But in this case, maybe I can swing in this bishop to d5 first. I know I did something a little strange, but I know that I, maybe I should have just castled it, okay. Um, but it's just an opening trap. By the way, if I take on d4, 
c5 c4 usually the trap is more clear when there's no queen d5 right with the knight on f6 they go c5 and c4 and your bishop is dead right right so he still doesn't have c6 so i'm going to take the pawn i have a sneaky little threat to go queen a7 at some point maybe to pick up a pawn on a6 <laughs> if i go queen to a7 he has to move the bishop out of there and i hope aish is not listening to all of this and <laughs> stopping all the threats <laughs> I'm giving away my secret threats. Okay, so he wants to play c6, c5, and c4, naturally. So how do we deal with this? I do not want him to play... Okay, I guess for now, let's just keep it simple and move the queen back. <laughs> the reason is... When he plays c5, I want the square d5 for my bishop. And if my queen was on d4, he will always get pawn push and pawn push, which is a little annoying for me. Okay, so I think we have a reasonably normal position now. Okay, let's save this pawn like this. So far, pretty solid game, I guess. Nothing special. Now, also remember this, guys. I'm not trying to play like super fast or anything. I want to still make sure we get a good game with good ideas. Sometimes I feel like that's one problem in um, Blitz. Just kind of get carried away playing super fast, yeah? Okay, so I got my square, so I'm going to plug my bishop into d5. So we have a backward pawn on d6, which is what usually I want to play against in a, in a structure like this. Okay, so he is... Um, okay, I'm going to just do this for now. And I don't want him to play b4 and then take on d5 because I need the square d5 for myself. That d5 square is my outpost and d6 is the backward pawn. So now I'm actually pretty happy. I feel like... I have achieved the outpost square and um, at some point if he does bishop takes queen takes we're going to have a classical good um, I mean classic good bishop versus bad bishop kind of structure that's mm -hmm. what we got the pawn on d6 is backward d5 square is outpost e7 bishop is a bad bishop that's pretty comfortable in the meantime uh, we played this I'm going to play c3 to make sure there is no counter attack along this I can also, so Hazy is playing against Boss Pineapple. That's interesting. That should be a good good game. Okay, let's just develop. Okay, so he is offering a trade, which I clearly don't want to. I did gain something by putting his bishop on e5, I think, because he doesn't have rook e5 kind of moves right now. But let's just go here and just attack the pawn. Okay, so he is giving me a free pawn in exchange of... So I can take on d6, queen takes, rook takes, and he will take on e4. I will take on a6. And then he can simplify the position with b4. I have to say I'm not ready for that yet. <laughs> I want that pawn to be mine and I want it to be free. Okay, um, I should have seen that. <laughs> but now, maybe I can just take, because he does not have b4 to break anymore. Mm. Can also play queen d4, because I don't think he has anything concrete on a discover attack. Does he? He doesn't seem to. Let's just play queen to d4. Take a little bit of a risk here and see how we can we can deal with this. Yes, twenty six seconds, Ayush. Come on, let's see what what how you can deal with this particular position. Oh nope, free rook. <laughs> okay, bishop takes. Ayush, are you going to play this out to checkmate? 
Looks like he no, wants to. Out the on time. He's going to play until he loses on time. <laughs> Ooh, bishop h4. All right, Ayush, why don't we wrap this up? Do you really want to keep this? Keep this? I wanted to do a background check, man. <laughs> 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 to end this quickly. Oh, there's increment on this game. Okay, oh, is there? One. Yep. No wonder. Okay, I'm not going to play an increment match with you forever, Ayush. Come on. <laughs> Thank you. All right, Boss Pineapple says he's losing. I want to see this game. Ooh, this got quite interesting. So white is actually up material. Wait, he's not. Actually, I thought white's up a pawn, but he's not. By the way, Ayush, good game, Ayush. It's, um, I think you just blundered that rook. And also out of the opening, you have to remember not to get that um, backward pawn on d6, okay? But otherwise, you played a good game. So let's take a look at this one. Coach Ben is playing black against Arman, who's playing white and he has an interesting position his king is a little weak but i think his pawn structure is slightly favorable right who do you prefer henry i'm sorry i can't see the game is this boss pineapple yes boss it's against um ben i'm looking at ben's game now mm -hmm. are you able to see it now no i see ben playing uh glowing actor that's uh, that game is done that, chest, that game should have a result. Ooh, mm -hmm. Ben went for a sacrifice. Wow, this makes this makes things interesting. While you catch up, I'll talk about the game. Hopefully, you can get here soon. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Om, you can challenge me next, but I just want to see how this game ends. I want to see how um, Coach Coach Ben does this because you sacrificed an exchange, which made it quite. Interesting, and he's again low on time by about 20 seconds. Who do you guys prefer? On chat, let's see. Ryan and uh, um, Ohm looks like they have to go. I can play against you guys after this together. But let's watch this game, and after this game, it's going to be Ryan and um, Ryan and Ohm. It doesn't matter, Ryan. You can challenge whatever color you want. He wants to know if we should play white or black. <laughs> By the way, not really a thing in Blitz. Don't what is it? Draw. All these draw offers. <laughs> Wait, was that a draw offer? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Right, Arman, you wait so long to play a ma match against the coach and you want to offer a draw? <laughs> but this got interesting, though. He has two pawns. Yeah, definitely. I mean, well, I, I wanted to say def definitely, but Black's King could get a little weak here if we can manage to use the rook to attack. But, I mean, well, the, the pawns being on light square and the bishop being on dark square, I think Black should be okay there, right? The bishop on d4 is just too strong. Hmm. The only thing black has to do is probably keep the queens on the board. Let's see what he does. Because if queens get traded, um, everything else is okay except that pawn on a7. Because if white is somehow able to get that pawn on a7, that would mean trouble. Okay, so we're kind of seeing some queen chasing here. With the last few seconds... Heading towards an interesting finish. All right, Ohm has to play for the league and Ryan has to play for the league. That's right. We have a mid-Atlantic chess league that happens every Friday. And if I remember right, this is... Are we on... I think we are on game um, week three. Week three on that. The long games. Oh, another repetition of queen c6, queen g2. Okay. Yeah, you gotta keep track of those. <laughs> At some point... I mean, chess.com automatically does that, right? You can set it to. I'm not sure if it automatically plays it at three. I think if the position returns, I mean, yes, Ohm, you can challenge me for three minutes. No increment. 
no increment. Well, actually, I'm trying to do two games at a time. Two games, three minutes is going to be a pretty interesting challenge for me. Let's see. I also like to take up challenges in which I, I'm not so sure if I can win. <laughs> oh, that's what makes it a challenge. Exactly. That, that makes it more interesting, right? And kids, they have, they have a good shot at beating me. Mm-hmm. Harish, you can play too, but uh, Ryan and Om need to leave. So I'm going to get, give them a shot after this. But you can challenge Coach uh, Ben. Hazy13 is Coach Ben. You can give it a shot to play against him. So Ayush is pointing out time. Ben um, has only 12 seconds. Yeah. Oh, there's increment again. Do they have increment in this one too? He's getting two seconds to move. <laughs> Why do we see the time control of the game? Okay, so queens have come off. But I think these pawns aren't that fast with the rook and the king. Well, right now, I think they are. Right? That's the wrong pawn to usually push. I would always start with g4. <laughs> you never push the pawn. See, now I feel like they're pretty fast, Henry. What do you think? I mean, because f3 check, h4, g3, I think it's basically what is lost. He basically pushed the pawn to a queen. <laughs> mm-hmm. So no wonder um, Ben is relaxed because he sees that he he sees that he has a he has an increment. Mm-hmm. Arman now decides to think. Arman, you had a great game. If it was not for increment, is they're saying Ben would be lost. That's true, but you know he does have an increment. So all right, Ben won so easily after trading queens. Do you still think that he should have tried so hard to keep the queens on? Well, I think White Armand should have gone for the a pawn through the e file. He didn't do that, so that was a little bit more tricky. But I mean, when you have two connected pass pawns with a strong bishop, it's never going to be easy to beat it. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I mean, maybe White could have put up a better fight. All right, guys, so Ohm and Ryan can challenge me. I'm going to accept it together. Let's put a challenge three minutes. And after that, we'll come back to Coach Ben's game. If someone wants to challenge Coach Ben, you can do that. And um, Coach Henry, do you want to accept challenge right now? Maybe also you, you can do that. Yeah. Okay, yeah, Coach Henry will also accept a challenge if you want to challenge him. It's new key chess. Mm-hmm. I have not received any challenges, by the way. You guys have to send it. You're saying you did, but I didn't get it. Why don't you cancel that and send it again? Oh, I'm saying he challenged me, but I don't have your challenge. Okay, now I see Ryan's. I'm going to start that. Oh, I still don't see a challenge. Ryan says he went unrated. Always go rated. You have nothing to lose. If you draw, you're going to go up 20 points. Always go rated. <laughs> That's right. Especially if it's a sign. Come on. Okay, somehow I'm not getting the second game. I don't know. Um, I think I have a setting to accept multiple challenges. I, I've done this before, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, he keeps doing this and I keep forgetting what to do. Every single time. Okay, Bishop G7. Let's just play the normal lines. Normal moves, normal lines. Queen F2. Queen F2. Okay. Just going to play normal moves. Okay, I've seen this once before. And I probably fell for it again, but this time I don't think it's so bad. Usually, this is a nice trap. Mm-hmm. Have you started playing? I have no challenges. Ben is playing. We kind of have a crazy interesting game. Okay, now I get the second challenge. I'm going to accept this. All right, Ohm has his challenge accepted. Do I take the pawn? Do I stop him from casting? Okay, I'll take the pawn. All right, I'm going to start a game as well. Awesome. <laughs> it's going to make it interesting. With Ryan, I'm a little low. What kind of a move is this, Om? 
What kind of a move is bishop d6 after bishop b5? Are you trying to trick me with something? Okay. He wants to do that. Let's just castle. I'm going to play simple against Ryan. You give me the long diagonal. You give me the two bishops. That's what I want. Okay, let's take the free pawn that I have. Okay, you cannot be doing this, I think. Clearly wants to play pawn up. And I don't want him to play that, so I'm just going to stop that for now. And uh, free pawn. All right, I won my game again. This is like the King's Gambit. Who are you playing uh, against? <laughs> against Big Monkey 345. Big Monkey 345. Mm -hmm. So Ryan has played some super risky moves here. So hopefully I should get that. Yeah, Big Monkey, your, your opening was a little crazy. I mean, if your opponent plays the King's Gambit, it's usually good to, I don't know, at least start with taking the pawn. If you want to decline it, I think Bishop C5 might be the best game. But. I'm probably winning multiple ways, and I don't know which one I should do. Okay, so rook takes c5, just wins a piece. But I want to play more experimental chess. But Ryan is up a lot of time. As always, I don't want to fall behind on time. The more fun way to play chess is what I've opted for. <laughs> All right, I'm playing Dinesh. Okay, fun ended very quickly because I got his queen, so... Oh, how about a free pawn? Okay, free pawn it is. Uh, I'm winning multiple ways again. Let's do this. Oh, shoot, I just blundered a knight. Blundered a knight. Okay, Ryan resigned. Which means I can focus a little bit more on Ohm's game. Which was probably necessary because I blundered a knight from a winning position. Are you playing another game, Henry? Yes, I'm playing Dinesh. Oh, Dinesh. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he's giving me a free rook, so I'm going to take that. So let's take this knight as well. And let's send this guy out. I could have started with a check. But that's okay. Okay, so that's a mistake because now I'm going to play the check. Throw another check. The queen goes back to e5 and h8 and e5 and h8. Okay, oh, good game. That was a couple of good games. Let's see... Um, Oh, I'm playing just one game at a time right now. I want to make sure everyone gets a chance. So Hazy is not playing a game. If you guys want to challenge Coach uh, Ben, you can challenge him right now. We probably have about 15 more minutes. Neil, you have not played a game again? Sure, send me, send me a challenge, Neil. You can challenge me. And someone who's not played a game yet, if you challenge me, I will, I will take one more. Okay, Neil, you had a nice game last week, I believe. I haven't seen the game. I know you beat some 2150 in the league, right? So, hopefully you're ready for this one. Oh, we got another scotch. And I'm usually a little worried about this. Ah, h4. Nice. Let's just play the simpler lines. Death Eater 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Who are you? I do not remember who you are. I'm not going to accept it yet. We are going to have a small training match with Neil. H4 is a pretty critical line. I spent some time analyzing it because at mm -hmm. some point someone played this line against me and I was like totally busted. I had no idea what was going on. Okay, so what do we do here? I guess we can play F6. Try to open up this position as much. 
I also remember this line a little bit more because I had a very, very important game against um, Andrew Tang, Grandmaster Andrew mm. Tang in in the Eastern Congress. When we were playing for the championship, I ended up losing the game. Cost me quite a bit of money. So, <laughs> In this line in the scotch? In this line in scotch in H4. Okay. And I was not very happy. Okay, this is interesting. So he's allowing me to take this and maybe play this. I should be winning something here. Don't know what that something is. Ah, if I start with this, he cannot play rook e4. Okay, so let's play this first. So Neil, I think something went wrong in your opening. You have to, I don't remember the exact moves. Again, I did some analysis, but I, all of these openings are crazy moves, but something has probably gone wrong. Death Eater is Harish. Okay, Harish. That is not a bad move. I think that is putting me in a little bit of trouble. You cannot play for, you can play 94 is the only move. So I'm just going to play Queen H5. Okay, Harish, you can challenge me now. I think I'm a little comfortable, but I'm low on time. So, but I have a good feeling about my position. So I'm going to take a chance. Challenge me right now, Harish, and let's see. If you're playing the Mid-Atlantic Mid Chess League, remember that it's a G60 game. It's going to give you plenty of time. So take your time and play that. Do not rush. So let's just take this. Okay, so Harish is playing white against me. So he took that. I don't see how he can save the knight. Can he save the knight? Because the queen's hitting the knight and the rook is hitting the queen. Unless he has some kind of a trick, which I don't see. This should be kind of lost. Okay, so he's going back. And I don't think knight d6 or anything is going to be a big problem. So I'm actually going after the piece. Taking that risky piece capture. Okay, we have the Nimzo Indian defense. Queen c2. Ooh, okay, I know this nice tricky line. Okay, so what is he saying? He's saying I cannot take it with the queen, but why can't I take it with my rook? <laughs> All right, good game, Dinesh. Yeah, I don't think you, you can't trade into a king and pawn game. Like the working game was way easier to hold because you're only down a pawn. But if you trade rooks, then I think you're toast. But it was still actually interesting. Oh, you're done with the game with Dinesh? Oh. Oh, I'm super low on time. I didn't realize that. Okay, still no checkmates, so I'm just going to double up. By the way, I noticed that um, Queen C5, let's keep it simple, not get checkmated. Okay, why am I so much trouble I shouldn't be I'm pretty sure I messed up something and I'm in serious trouble in all my games <laughs> okay let's just play some random stuff now it's just not worth it okay what am I supposed to do get move in Twenty-five to twenty-seven seconds is not good. You have increment in those games or no? I don't. But might get checkmated or might not. Still up a piece. Okay. Traded queens. That's a good start. Oh no, stop moving. Oh my god, it's moving me from this game to another game. Harish, please don't make a move. 
Harish, stop making a move. <laughs> oh no. Harish is making a move every second. <laughs> stop it, Harish. Okay. No, he beat me on time with a one move checkmate. <laughs> oh my god, Harish. You literally messed me up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I had one move checkmate. And Harish kept making a move every second. Where are you, Harish? You really had to make a move every second, didn't you? <laughs> That's okay. Good game. Good game, Neil. But I think you have to check your opening. Is a Hazy playing a game? I'm not sure. I'm playing a bullet, so... Oh, you're playing a bullet. Okay. I'm going to quickly check if Hazy is playing a game. And I see Boss Pineapple is challenging me, but Hazy is not. Um, okay, we have about eight minutes. Boss Pineapple, go ahead. Challenge me. I'll play. And Harish, I don't have a great position against Harish. I just really don't like my position. It's going to play knight g5 and knight h4. Okay, I'm going to try to do this. I'm still not a big fan of my position. I probably need to trade some stuff and get this going. I am down a little bit of time. Don't want to go knight to b6. That seems like a terrible move. Don't want to play. Okay. Man, this is not so not so much fun. So my problem is this long diagonal of pawns, and uh, my hope is that I can blockade them with my knight. So that's why I didn't want to play knight to b6 because my knight was supposed to come to f8 and e6. And even if that allows a trade, that's okay. Sai wants to play a game. Okay, let's accept that. By the way, guys, only accept, only challenge me three minutes, okay? I feel like I don't have time for five minutes right now because the game will end. By the way, if you started a challenge with five minutes, that's okay. We'll play. Uh, if you're down material, just resign, okay? Because that will help speed up things. All right, we're going three games. All right. Dinesh, I'm sorry for flagging you down eight weeks in a row. I, I got feel <laughs> three games going right now. I'm not sure if I'm equipped to do three games, but let's try. As you can challenge me too. It might not be on stream, but yes, you can challenge Coach Henry. Please do so. Probably a good idea right now, given that I'm struggling for time here. Okay, let's just take with the queen. Okay, he's letting me play 96, so hopefully I establish my blockade, which is something I wanted. Uh, okay, let's go like that. Want to play an IQP position. How's my time? I'm down with Harish. I'm down. Well, luckily I have more time with others. Should I go and grab a free pawn here? It looks risky, but I'm going to do it. I am going to do it. Okay, so you want my pawn. You want my bishop. You can take it. So, so far, do we have any wins, Henry? Sorry, say that again? So far, do we have any wins against us? We don't, right? We have been able to hold down the fort, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, same for Ben. Okay, he wants to go back like that. Uh, okay, let's just continue developing. You want to take, take. Okay, I'm going to take this, Harish. Okay, let's go queen b6 and keep forcing you to take that. Okay, that's not a good way. I think I'm picking up a free pawn again, am I? Yep. Seems like it. Maybe we should have taken on d5. Um, probably not the best idea for you not to take on d5. So let's just... Oh, you want to take my pawn? Go for it. This is kind of exciting to play. Oh, no. He let me do a family fork. King or the royal fork, the royal or the family fork. Okay, I was hoping you will play that move so I can play this. Sai. So okay, Harish resigned. He 
You had a great game up to a point, Harish. I think you could have done better. That's okay. I have a nice little trick coming in size game. Let's see if you can see it. All right, so it's like 656. This is probably my last set of games. And after this is done, we'll just unlay some and we'll be done with it. Um, C5. Everything looks super risky on what you guys are doing. Okay, so D5 is well defended. Why don't we just push the pawn? Did I just hang that bishop? Looks like I did, and somehow was not captured. And I did hang a pawn here. That's a little painful. Hmm. Okay, let's play for the two bishops. Boss pineapple is up on time and up a pawn. That's okay. Should I take with a queen? Um, so maybe I'll take with a queen, yes. Okay, so let's line things up. There's no rush. Okay, queen to d1, my friend, is not the way to do this. Super soccer, Ryan has checkmated, checkmated me on g2 and bullet. Good game. <laughs> Why? He has a game to start in two minutes and he's playing bullet against you? <laughs> Good warm up. Good warm up. Good Please game. don't play it like a bullet in your regular game. <laughs> and he declines the rematch. Good pause. Okay. I'm not taking your pieces. I'm going to checkmate you, boss pineapple. Okay, <laughs> check. Not taking your queen. Good game. All right, I have my last game against Sai. I guess this is lost Sai. You have to probably wrap it up. Okay, he resigned. All right, it was a good, fun session. I think Henry, Coach Henry, I'll let you finish your game. By the way, Mahir, stop typing the same thing on the chat again. I want you to type stuff once. We have a lot of people here. Hopefully everyone got a chance to play. I know some of you are challenging again. I will, I can try to, but remember this, guys. We've all had a long day. We had a full day of camp and a lot of playing. Uh, by the way, Armand, you are playing a lot of chess, from what I hear. You should probably take a little bit of break. But you had, um, you played pretty good. I'm happy about it. Let's see. Um, okay, Neil says he you were supposed to play Rukesh three followed by. And then f4, a4, etc. Okay. Interesting. Well, I don't know if you mean f4. You never played f4, really. I think you're meaning something else, Neil. But hopefully you're already starting your games. Yes, Ryan. Good luck. Take your time. It's g60. I want you to play the slow games. Those are playing in the league. You can leave right now and challenge your respective players. Henry, are you still playing? I want to see it. Yeah, yeah. I'm playing. Okay. Let's watch Coach Henry playing. Nuki Chess, where are you Nuki Chess? There you are. You're playing against Harish, okay. Mm -hmm. Mahir is saying it doesn't even feel like one hour. I'm actually very happy to hear that Mahir. It is um, fun to interact and play against you guys. So I'm glad you guys show up and play. Hopefully you'll have more and more kids challenging coaches. Hmm. This is not a very good endgame for me. Yeah, not a great pawn structure. <laughs> I, I, I think that I've got this exact same endgame against somebody else in the same opening. Maybe, I, maybe it's a clue I should stop playing this. Hmm. That was too easy. Coach Henry still has a three minute game left. Uh, okay, Armand, challenge me one last game. Three minute game. But I'm going to be looking at Coach Henry's game and playing a game and see what the, what it is. Mm. 
we have the knight f3 g3 bg2 setup which is my favorite flexible structure my opponent traded the bishop for my knight and fixed my pawn structure so i'm pretty happy now oh no <laughs> <laughs> harish you know better than that you should not be trading that in louis by the way what coach henry was talking about is this capture oops i want to go back quickly show that to all of you guys he was talking about this capture knight d5 bishop takes d5 you cannot do that you cannot fix your opponent's pawn structure looks like i'm on pre-mood do you want to take this pawn okay go ahead i don't mind how's your ending coming along mm. Not sure. Well, the problem with having such a bad ending is that your opponent can make a mistake and it's still not that good for you. But he, he's still slightly better. <laughs> <laughs> Arman, you can't hang free pieces. Oh, nice go back. Yes, Mahir, I think Arman's going to be my last challenge. I was not going to take any more challenges, but Coach Henry is finishing up a game, so I just took one more. And that's it. Should I trade this? Hmm, I'm just going to. It's actually quite annoying. Let me just trade this. Hmm. Oh, you have a very interesting king and pawn game. Yeah. My policy is always going to king and pawn games. <laughs> always going to a king and pawn game? That's quite especially, an interesting policy. Especially if you're worse. Okay. Um, hmm. I'm curious about your king and pawn again. Like I might be about to run out of moves. Okay, Coach Henry has this king and pawn game going. Which looks extremely interesting. Let's see if Harish can pull up the first set. <laughs> we cannot let that happen, Henry. <laughs> No pressure. Nice. I like that move. I was looking at a5. I was looking at a5 and was hoping that you're going to play it. Nothing else looked too good. So. This also might not be good. Oh, okay. I think he probably just blundered. Now I can take both these pawns, right? <laughs> yeah, he just cannot get in. This is a very interesting endgame. I don't think he can capture. But it's also not <laughs> clear what else he can do, you know? Now the point is your king just walks around and starts grabbing pawns. <laughs> And he's just basically watching. Cannot do much. Yeah, his pawns are so fixed on the king side. A5 was pretty strong. Alright, so the last game is Coach Henry's game. I'm just going to go back a little earlier and see. This is the point, the critical point of the game. I think he's trying to play a5 and uh, it doesn't look like he has that many moves. He might have run out of moves if white had played a5. Harish, you had a very interesting king and pawn game. I would definitely analyze this. So, Henry, maybe he could have played a5, yeah? Instead of g3 on move 29? Yes, play a5 himself and then I end in one game. So, which brings me back to your move g5. Maybe you should have played a5 before that. Yes. So after king d6, it's 27 white. So I think both players are allowing a5 for both sides for a couple of moves. 
Why should have started twenty seven with a five instead? He plays h five. You but probably should. A lot better for me after the pawns got fully fixed on the uh, king side, because then he can't try to make a pass pawn over there. But even like, otherwise, I think your a five is just strong. I think your a five is just already strong because, I mean, I have no other way to deal with it, right? You're going to play. So the only move I can think of after a five is king c three. So in move twenty, move thirty. Mm -hmm. He played b takes a five, right? Mm -hmm. Instead, maybe king c three. The point is, you might still run into a zugzang because b takes a five, king takes a five, and you might run into a zugzang. But the beauty is, you don't even have to take. You can simply play king c seven, king b six. Ah, okay. Because anytime he takes on a five, you play c five anyway. So the point is, black mm -hmm. will come around, and then you will take on b four, and then you will play c five. So I think black is just winning in the end game once you got a five. Once I got it, interesting. Yes. Yeah, I think the main mistake there was fixing the pawn structure because you're way better when you had the bishop versus the knight, and my pawn structure was all messed up. That's right. Yeah, when you played knight takes, um, uh, taking on d5 was probably the biggest mistake. All right, that was fun. Um, I think a nice session. We had probably about 15 players coming in and playing against us today in today's session. Uh, mm -hmm. We want more of the younger kids to actually play. I mean, I see that the kids. Like older kids and higher kids are actually enjoying this, but we also want younger kids to come and do a challenge. We might be able to do some time odds or peace odds or something like that. <laughs> yes, that'll be a lot of fun. That'll be a lot of fun. All right, thank you everyone. Thank you, Coach Henry. Uh, we will wrap up the session right now. I will see you all next week at the same time for Challenge Your Coach. Yep, bye guys. Bye.